So today I want to talk about how to build a successful manifestation practice. Because the most common questions that I get asked are some things along the lines of, Missy, how do I apply your teachings and Neville's teachings to X, Y, Z? How can I get my specific outcome with these teachings? And it can understandably be very, very overwhelming when we are new at this. There is so much information out there, it can feel incredibly overwhelming as to where to begin building that successful practice, especially if you are a beginner. And the one thing that I say ad nauseum is that this is a practice. Understanding that conscious manifestation and the law of assumption is a practice is crucial to understand. These teachings require a radical new way of thinking. And when we first learn about it, when we are still discovering it, it can be a shock to the mind. It can feel downright impossible to believe. It can feel like this is too good to be true. So to start building success with the law, we have to be able to take what we learn and put it into practice. One thing that Neville would say repeatedly is that we must be doers of the word and not just hearers only. So today I want to discuss how we can go about step by step building and implementing a new practice, even if you are a total new beginner. Now, just to get this out of the way, because I know that there are going to be people that ask, yes, these teachings apply to whatever you're trying to manifest. It does not matter what it is that you desire, whether that be a specific person, whether that be starting your own business, getting a promotion, a new house, a new car, does not matter. If your question is, does these teachings apply to what I desire, the answer is always 100% of the time, yes. Now before we dive into these steps and how to manifest and how to build a practice, it is important to note that this is going to be very different than any other area of study you've encountered before. And what I mean by that is this is not going to be anything like what you were learning in school. This is not going to be a textbook learn and regurgitate sort of a teaching. Because manifestation is a vastly different area of study than anything else out there. Which means we cannot approach these teachings the same way that we approached areas of study in the past. And the reason for that is that you are the subject to be studied. Self-inquiry and self-observation are at the core of these teachings. And let me repeat that so I am 100% clear. Self-inquiry and self-observation are at the very core of these teachings because ultimately this is the study of the self. We are the subject that is being studied. One of the most common mistakes that I see a lot of people making, especially those who are new at this, is taking somebody else's practice and trying to copy paste it directly onto themselves. Instead of getting familiar with their own sets of beliefs and their assumptions and how the law has worked for them before, they just try to take something that's worked for somebody and replicate that in their life. And this is not always the most effective approach because there is no one size fits all practice, technique, or way to go about this that's going to work for everybody. The nature of your experience is uniquely your own. We all have different sets of beliefs, assumptions, experiences, circumstances, personalities, what we like, what we don't like. So this practice really needs to be tailored to you and finding what works best for you. Again, this is about the study of self. This is the self inquiry. This is the self investigation. We do not want to try to compete with others or just blindly accept what somebody else tells us is true and the way to go about it. Which brings me to step number one, and that is to not just blindly accept what somebody else is telling you to do. As I say in many, many of my videos, manifestation is not a doing process. This is not us trying to get the 3D to change. We shouldn't be approaching these techniques and exercises as a way to get the 3D to change or get something that we ultimately want. This is where a lot of the early struggles arise and where a lot of people find difficulty in the beginning. We cling on to every word that we hear as gospel instead of testing this ourselves. Building trust and faith in the law and ourselves as the operant power is going to be essential to seeing lasting results. So the first rule in building a successful practice is to not just trust blindly what other people are telling you to do. 
So with this first rule in mind, here is how you want to go about building a successful practice uniquely for you. Step number one is to be insistent on seeing the parallels between past internal states in the 3D experiences and encounters that you've had in your life. One of the most important things that we want to do from the get-go is begin to see how we have actually been doing this our whole lives and this whole time. Building our faith and trust in the law cannot be stated enough. The importance of this is vastly overlooked and it is vital that we start to see just how we have automatically and always been doers of the law. We have always, our whole lives, been manifesting. And I know that this is a term we often hear in this community, but we have to be able to see it for ourselves. We have to be able to look at the parallels between the inner world and the inner state of being and the external experiences that we've had. We have to be able to connect the dots and see for ourselves that this is something that we have always and automatically been doing. Because there is no such thing as coincidence. Nothing in life happens at random. And to really begin to trust this, we have to see for ourselves how this whole time our imagination has been the thing that's been creating our reality. Step number two is to explore different techniques and experiment with different ways of imagining. And again, this is a step that is often overlooked. We want to start to explore the ways in which we imagine, because again, this is gonna be different for everybody. And if we just take what somebody tells us as true and just start to blindly do it, a lot of times it could feel like we are trying to force it. And if there's one thing that we have to understand, it's that none of this, nothing in conscious creation is done through force or effort or willpower. Manifestation is the most natural thing in the world. We've literally been doing this our whole lives without even being conscious of it. And nothing that we've manifested in the past was put there through sheer willpower and effort. Neville Goddard went as far to say that the reason that we fail to manifest is because what we are imagining does not feel natural to us. And that is key, is the feeling of naturalness. We want to imagine and we want to begin to live in the end in a way that feels effortless. And this is again where it's going to be uniquely different for everyone. Everybody has ways in which they imagine that resonates and feels most natural for them. Some people are very visceral and love to visualize. They see mental pictures clearly. Others enjoy affirmations and find affirmations that resonate with them and helps to get them feeling good and feeling from that state of the wish fulfilled. It might be inner conversations. Perhaps you can hear conversations in the mind and that is what feels most natural for you but we have to take a bit of time to really discover, experiment, and play around with different ways of imagining and see what works best for us. As we know, there are trillions of techniques out there at this point, but we don't wanna just apply these relentlessly with force. Again, that is not going to lead you to the state of the wish fulfilled. So let yourself play, explore, and see what technique or what way of imagining works best for you. So once you've played around and you've gotten a feel for what techniques or what ways of imagining resonate most with you, step number three is to play around with different times of the day. As far as when to imagine, that is going to also be different for everybody. Are you a morning person? Then perhaps you wanna take 10, 15 minutes first thing in the morning before you get out of bed to let yourself turn within and go to that scene in imagination and really let yourself get lost in this imaginal act. Or perhaps you're a night owl and the nighttime is what works best for you. In that case, you can meditate every evening and allow yourself to feel into what it would be like now having the things that you desire or being the person that you desire to be. Everybody's gonna have a different schedule and different times of the day where they feel their very best and where this practice is gonna come in most naturally. And just a tip for this, make sure you're not trying to do too much. Don't try to set too high of a bar that feels like it's gonna to be too difficult to meet. We do not want to overdo it. <laughs> we do not want to bite off more than we can chew, so to speak. 
but play around with imagining at different times of the day, see what resonates for you, and you can start to build from there. Now, though this is going to be different times for everyone, the last thing that I do want to note in this step is to make sure that you are taking advantage of the natural windows either before bed or when we're waking up in the morning when we're naturally already in that groggy, drowsy state. There is a lot of power in that state before bed or right when we're waking up in the morning as we're coming to, we absolutely want to take advantage of this. Those are the most optimal times for subconscious impression. So make sure you are always being mindful of what you are imagining as you wake up and what you are taking with you into sleep. Step number four is to not fear the backlash. Now, though unpleasant and though this is not the most fun thing in the world, inevitably, for the vast majority of people, at some point or another, you're gonna notice yourself falling out of that state of the wish fulfilled. You may notice at times feelings of anxiety, interest of thoughts coming in, and bad days that may happen occasionally. We may find ourselves in a mood, we may wake up on the wrong side of the bed, be very sad or angry for seemingly no reason, and this is completely normal. There is absolutely no need to panic if you're not feeling positive and amazing 24 seven. And the reason for this is because the ego self despises more than anything in the world change. The ego fears change. So as we are beginning to change the way that we are thinking, the way that we are imagining, we may notice from time to time a backlash of sorts. I have made a video talking all about ego backlash, what to expect and how you can ultimately move through it as quickly as possible. If you're interested, you can check out that video up here. I'll also link it down below. But if you have moments that feel difficult, challenging, and it feels like you're falling backwards or regressing, note that this is completely normal. We do not need to try to fight it. We do not need to flip every single negative thought. We do not need to fear if anything comes up that may not be ideal. It is so important to note if intrusive thoughts, feelings of doubt, feelings of insecurity come up, don't panic. This is normal. This will pass. And as you continue to imagine, as you continue to get familiar with the state of consciousness that you desire to experience, the backlash will lessen in frequency, severity, until it goes away entirely. Some helpful tips if you are feeling anxious during the day-to-day -day is to do some things to help alleviate that anxiety first. Don't try to force yourself to feel positive or fight your thoughts. Instead, try something to help calm you down first. Try breathing exercises, taking slow, deep breaths from the belly. Try tapping. Try going for a walk or a drive. Try having a playlist curated beforehand, something that will help to soothe you or alleviate or help you to feel better. But regardless, know that these moments happen. Virtually everybody experiences them. And no matter what, so long as you continue to move yourself back to that state of the wish fulfilled, you will overcome it and faster than you might think. Step number five is to strengthen your imaginal acts by imagining as often as possible throughout the day. Now, naturally, we're going to have things in our day that makes it so we can't just sit around in meditation or sats all day. We have jobs, we have commitments, we might have kids to take care of, appointments we need to go to. In the day to day, we may get caught up with other things and that's okay. But as often as you can, as often as you are able to, let yourself go back to that state of the wish fulfilled. Let yourself go back to the feeling of already being that which you desire to be. The key here is frequent occupation of that new state. We don't just want to imagine living in the end for five, 10 minutes a day and spend the rest of the day ruminating in that old story. So as often as you are able to, without forcing it, allow yourself to continue to strengthen those imaginal acts by frequently occupying that state of the wish fulfilled. Another quick tip on this one is if you are really busy during the day to day, if you find you did not have a whole lot of free time to allow yourself to imagine or didn't imagine, then really make sure that you're taking advantage of that time before bed. Nighttime is a fantastic time to let herself imagine. At the end of the day, when we have no more commitments, there's nothing that can possibly interrupt us. 
It's just us and our imagination. You can also do this in the morning if evenings don't work best for you. But I find that it truly helps if we really utilize that time period before bed or in the morning when there's nothing else that we have to focus on, nothing else that we have to worry about, and allow yourself to just completely surrender to the state of the wish fulfilled. And that is really all you have to do. You do not have to make yourself do anything that doesn't feel natural or normal for you. You do not have to force yourself to do things that don't make sense or don't resonate with you. Ultimately, what it comes back to is self-observation and really letting ourselves get familiar with what resonates for us, what we are observing, what we are thinking, what we are feeling in our day to day. This practice is going to be unique for everyone. Whenever I get the question of, Missy, what scene should I use? What affirmation should I use? How many times should I do X, Y, Z? I cannot give a definitive answer because what works for me, what resonates for me, may not resonate at all for you. It might feel completely foreign and alien, whereas for somebody else, it's gonna feel like the most enjoyable and natural thing ever. At the end of the day, your practice has to make sense and feel best for you. Because again, the subject that we are studying here is us, it's the self, it's you, not what somebody else does, not what somebody else tells you is true. Through my own testing, experiences, and practice, nobody can convince me that these teachings are not true. Nobody can shake me from the solid foundation I have with the law. I have seen so clearly in my own experience that this works. And you can see that for yourself as well. But you must start to test this. You must start to see for yourself how you have been the creator in your reality. You must start connecting the dots between past experiences and what state of mind you were in at that time. You must start to see and explore and experiment for yourself in order to truly trust and believe that you are the operant power. If we are not a hundred on this, we will be double-minded. And a double-minded man is unstable in all its ways. And once you do this, once you understand that this is all exploration of self, and understand that this is all about getting familiar with your own wonderful human imagination and what resonates for you, what feels good and natural for you. Once you understand this and begin to apply this, that is how you're gonna go about creating a life beyond your wildest dreams. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. I hope you found it helpful. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please be sure to give it a thumbs up. And if you are interested in checking out any of my other resources, I will leave links down below to my coaching programs, my workshops and courses, masterclasses, my blog, my podcast, my social links. Got a ton of great resources down in the description box below, so don't forget to check it out. Also be sure to check out the other videos on this channel. Be sure to check out my Manifestation Fundamentals playlist. Each video is a different topic, but it all pertains how to manifest the best life ever. So until we meet again, you guys, as always, please take care, be well, and never forget how powerful you truly are. Happy manifesting, guys.